casino gambling and the anti-casino coalition. I'm pleased to have with me today Professor John Bent from the University of Illinois, Professor of Commerce and Legal Policy. He is here in Greenbrier County to discuss gambling commerce, the casino referendum, and a number of other issues that have been important to Greenbrier County voters in the last six months. Professor Kent, welcome to Greenbrier County. Well, thank you for having me. I'm uh, pleased to be back here. I uh, grew up in Waynesboro, Virginia. Uh, got a degree at William and Mary and got caught a couple of uh, law degrees at the University of Virginia. Used to travel over the Midland Trail here all the time visiting relatives and I'm just pleased to be back here. I've been studying uh, gambling uh, in Illinois since 1978. We were one of the first states to get the lottery back in the 1970s. We were the second state to get uh, riverboat casino gambling and uh, we've done multiple studies over the years. We uh, uh, if I could be so bold, we're instrumental in, in, uh, in promoting the National Gambling Impact Study Commission, which was passed in 1996 and issued its final report in 1999 and largely confirmed what we were saying for many, many years. And uh, that is that uh, you're not creating net new jobs with casino gambling. For every $1 in benefits, there are $3 in social costs and cost to the taxpayers. And you're not helping education either by bringing in gambling. How long have you been tracking casino gambling and gambling commerce? Uh, we've been doing this for years and years. Uh, we're on the leading edge, if I say so myself, uh, my colleagues and I. And I should also mention that uh, several of my colleagues and myself don't take any honorarium or consultant fees. We take our travel expenses for coming and educating the public. And that's what this is about. It's about educating the public and, and letting people decide for themselves how they feel about these issues once they have all the information. Is there, an, an, if you could say there's one issue relative to what you've learned about the Greenbrier uh, casino gambling referendum, what would it be? What bothers you the most uh, about this key issue here in Greenbrier County? Well, we published a, a political science article in 1998, and it basically says that people don't know what they're voting on. They think they're voting on one thing, and they're really voting on something else. This is really not about casinos at the Greenbrier. It's about casinos everywhere in West Virginia. And it's my understanding that the legislation is so written, or the net result of the legislation is going to be that every county can then vote on whether or not they want to have a casino in their county if one comes to the Greenbrier. The Greenbrier is a good lean in, lead in for casino gambling throughout the state of West Virginia. And the other thing is, you can wind up easily with a lot of Native American gambling. Because under the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, as soon as you let in casino gambling in particular, you can't keep out the Indian casinos. So if, we, if the voters of Greenbrier County approve a casino at the Greenbrier Hotel, how likely is it that a tribal casino could also come to Greenbrier County? It, it, extremely likely. The Native Americans are looking for different jurisdictions to bring in casino gambling. They'd basically be lining up around West Virginia looking for different spots to locate. And the closer to a population center, the better, because that way you can take more casino dollars, gambling dollars out of the economy. Let me give you an example. In Illinois, there are no Native American lands, no reservations uh, that belong to Indian tribes. And yet, just recently, a tribe from, I believe, Oklahoma, filed a lawsuit claiming 15 counties, or major portions of 15 counties in central Illinois. And what they basically said is what they really want is not the land, they want casinos. So they're using these lawsuits to leverage for casinos in the different states. This is about taking money out through casino gambling. It doesn't generate genuine economic development. The National Gambling Impact Study Commission indicates that to a large extent. Uh, and so people need to realize that they're really voting for widespread gambling throughout the state of West Virginia if the casino gambling comes to the Greenbrier. There's no such thing as limited gambling or limited gaming. It has to expand in order to survive. You mentioned the National Commission on the Impact of Gambling, and I know you follow that. In fact, uh, you and your colleagues have actually, actually uh, encouraged such a, such a report. Can you explain the moratorium that was called for, how significant that moratorium is, how significant the research of the uh, Impact Study Commission was? Yes, the National Gambling Impact Study Commission was signed into law in 1996. My colleagues and I had a large impact, I, I believe, in, in helping get that through. 
And one reason that was called for is because the gambling industry's dollars were just overwhelming the public decision-making process. And you're probably experiencing that here in Greenbrier County. Uh, the gambling industry has a lot of money to spend on this, and people should ask where that money comes from and why they're willing to spend so much to bring casino gambling into a jurisdiction. And so we called for the National Gambling Impact Study Commission for an objective report that would tell us the, the costs and the benefits of different types of gambling throughout the United States. Uh, because the public really needs to know. It's a, it's a part of educating the public. And basically, uh, if you read a little five-page summary that I did uh, from a congressional hearing in 1994, which is republished as part of uh, the West Virginia Public Affairs Reporter, uh, you'll see my testimony republished that basically goes through the general impacts that you can uh, expect when you bring gambling to an area. And I believe the National Gambling Impact Study Commission largely endorsed these conclusions, and I'm going to give you some of those conclusions. But they also called, basically, for a moratorium on the expansion of gambling throughout the United what States. What does that mean, moratorium? They want a pause in the expansion of gambling throughout the United States they want so it to stop. people can take a breath and see what the costs are, see what the benefits are, and make informed decisions and not be uh, run over by PR dollars uh, from an industry which has an awful lot to gain at the expense of the communities where they're bringing this. Well, the pro-casino people say that this gambling commission was stacked with uh, religious zealots or conservatives. No, just, just the opposite. As a matter of fact, initially there were nine, well, there were nine commission, commissioners, and initially uh, four or five of those were pro-gambling commissioners. Uh, two would be considered uh, very critical of gambling issues, and three were considered uh, basically neutral. After all the testimony was in, they couldn't hide the negatives, and a lot of the neutral people became anti-gambling, and have become very outspoken, saying this is not good economic development, it doesn't create net new jobs, the social costs are about $3 for every $1 in benefits, uh, and you need to look at the downside and make informed decisions. And by the way, you're not creating jobs, it's a net wash when it comes to jobs. And these, this is so basic, it's in the World Book Encyclopedia. 1994 supplement says the creation of jobs is largely illusory. This is just basic economics, you're not creating net new jobs, so you can't really believe this jobs, 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 what you're really voting for is casinos, casinos, casinos. You've had an opportunity to look at the report that was paid for by the Greenbrier, done by the West University School of, of Business and Economics. Can you give us, in a nutshell, your uh, impression of the study, what, it, what the professors there were asked to do, and what, how they reached their conclusions, and the significance of their conclusions based upon what you know? Well, a, a lot of these studies are, are fine as far as they go, but they're benefit-benefit analyses. They're not cost-benefit studies. There was a report out of the University of Massachusetts which analyzed these industry reports or industry financed reports and basically said they're just looking at the positives, they're not looking at the negatives. And yes indeed, one plus one does equal two, but that's only half of the equation. You have to subtract four and when you do that you find out it's a net negative. What do you mean? And so they've only done half of the equation in the report. It's a benefit-benefit analysis. It is not a cost-benefit analysis. And the authors uh, uh, have even admitted this to their credit. Uh, they said they didn't take into account the costs and they've made several assumptions and uh, sometimes assumptions are okay to make with regard to these uh, studies. Uh, but basically you're not getting the whole story. Uh, voters aren't getting the whole story and they need to realize that there are significant uh, detriments to bringing casino style gambling in particular because casino style gambling is known as the crack cocaine of creating new addicted gamblers. People have forgotten this is a recognized impulse control disorder. It's an addictive behavior pursuant to the American Psychiatric Association. Have you had a chance to look at the legislation that the legislature passed? Oh well, yeah, that, the, the legislation is really interesting and the tip-off that it's not limited gambling is the fact that they've got a provision in there for video lottery terminals. Now, 80 to 90 percent of the money going into casinos is coming out of these machines, out of these video lottery terminals. This is not black tie, James Bond, gamble at the table type gambling. This is not card gambling, and the industry knows this. The industry knows that 
most of their money is going to come out of these video slot machines, out of these gambling machines. And that's 80 to 90 percent of the money that goes in there. And 27 percent to 55 percent of the money that's generated in the casino is coming out of pathological and problem gamblers. That's people who are gambling too much. Most of the money in these casinos is coming out of people who are gambling beyond recreation. And when they are finished gambling and they've lost all their money, they take their problems back into the business community and into the family community. And businesses and taxpayers wind up paying for these costs as they, as they go back into the community. And, and uh, let me tell you what some of these costs are. If you look, the proper way to view this is to look at the 35-mile feeder market around the casino. When you say feeder market, what do you mean by that? Well, well, the casinos themselves call them feeder markets. People should ask why they call them feeder markets. It's because they're taking money out of, their, out of the feeder market. They're feeding off of the market. And studies out of uh, Wisconsin and elsewhere show that in these feeder markets, people are spending 10% less on food, 25% less on clothing, and 37% have dipped into their savings in order to gamble. Now, they're not just taking money out. When the casino says, well, we're going to bring in $38 million to the economy, that's fine. But money doesn't grow on trees. Where does the money come from? Well, to a large extent, the money is coming out of the consumer dollars that are already going to buy televisions, uh, radios, cars, appliances, computers. And those are lost consumer dollars, which then become gambling dollars. And more importantly, you're losing the necessities of life. People are spending less on food and clothing, or, or a portion of the public are. And when that happens, that translates into a lost job productivity, increased personnel costs to businesses. It translates into societal problems, such as increased suicides. People don't realize that the suicide rate goes up around casinos as people lose their money. And also child abuse. In one study, went up 42 to 43 percent. Bottom line. The taxpayers wind up paying $3 in social costs for every $1 in benefits. And I don't care what the benefits go for. The social costs are at least $3. And there are other studies that show that the costs are $4, $5, $6. Um, Florida, which is sort of a parallel because they, they look at, the, they market their natural resources, the beauty of their beaches. The Greenbrier markets the beauty of the mountains. Uh, they rejected casinos. They did their homework. And they said the social costs, the increased crime costs, would be six, seven, or eight dollars for every one dollar in benefits to the economy. And that was in Florida. That was in Florida. In summary, last question: What do you think, truly think, the economic impact would be on Greenbrier County? Can you make, can you make some predictions of where the Greenbrier will be, or where West Virginia will be if this resolution, this referendum passes? Well, no matter how you cut the pie. The bottom line economics generally stay the same. For every one job you create, you're losing one from the surrounding community. So it's a net wash on jobs. And in the case of the Greenbrier, you're going to be bringing in people from Las Vegas because they're the ones who know how to manage these things. So you're really not creating good net new jobs even at the Greenbrier. You might even be losing some jobs as people go away from the golf course and start gambling their money in the casino. They're not on the golf course anymore. They're not doing the, the horse, uh, the equestrian events anymore. Uh, and for every $1 in benefits, there are at least $3 in social costs. The ABCs are new addicted gamblers, new bankruptcies, up 18 to 34 percent in the feeder markets around casinos, and new crime and corruption. Crime going up 10 percent and trending up afterwards as people lose their money. We see increases in embezzlements, robberies, forgeries, proprietary, uh, uh, property-related uh, crimes. Uh, people need the money and uh, they embezzle from their employers. Uh, businesses should be very concerned about this. Um, uh, we did a study which showed that this is like a red flag to businesses. Businesses do not want to locate in communities with high crime rates, and they don't want to locate in communities with casinos. A lot of the casino employees themselves don't want to live in, in communities with uh, casinos. They're not family-oriented. They want to live outside the 35-mile feeder market. We appreciate you being here and visiting with us. Well, thank you. Enjoyed it.